Hello, my name is Tanya Jackson and I'm a senior HR consultant at Brown Jacobson. I'm here today to talk to you about suspension and I will be covering with you when we should be considering suspension, what keeping children safe in education tells us we must be doing and how we should be supporting employees who are suspended from work. Suspension should never be an automatic response when an allegation is reported. And it's very important that we get the decision right. We must therefore carefully consider whether the circumstances warrant suspension. This is likely to be in serious cases such as where there is cause to suspect risk or harm to a child. In cases likely to result in suspension, I would always strongly recommend that you seek professional HR advice. When considering suspension, we should always explore if there are any alternatives to suspending an employee. A list of alternate options are listed in Keeper Children Safe in Education, and therefore we should be considering the following options. Can the employee be re redeployed within the school or college so that they do not have any direct contact with the child or children involved? Can the employee be escorted when they are likely to have contact with the child or children involved? Could you redeploy the employee to an alternative work so that they do not have any unsupervised access with children? Could the child or children involved be moved to another class to avoid contact with the employee? Or could you consider transferring the employee to another location, such as another school within an LA or trust? Keep a child Children Safe in Education states that you must record the rationale and justification of suspending an employee. This should also include what alternatives have been considered and why you have rejected these alternatives. At Brown Jacobson, we are able to provide our clients with a decision to suspend checklist. This checklist helps you to consider all of the alternatives and which will capture the rationale for each decision that you have made. It will also help and guide you to reach the, the right decision to suspend or not to suspend and will keep you compliant with keeping children safe in education. When you have made a decision to, 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 to suspend somebody, then written confirmation should be given to the employee within one working day. Again, we are able to provide templates, letters and scripts to aid you with this. At the point of suspension, and this also needs to be included with the docu included and documented in the letter, you need to inform the employee of who their named support person will be. You need to think carefully about who this person is and ensure that they are connected are not connected to the allegation in any way to ensure there is no conflict. The person will also need to be somebody that the employee is comfortable and familiar with. You will also need to list any other support that you have available or can offer such as, an EA, such as your EAP details or any counselling services available. What we must not forget is that we have a duty of care to our employees and that includes any member of staff who are under, under suspension. We must be mindful that when an allegation is being investigated, it is likely to be very stressful for the employee and their family. It is therefore essential that we offer continued welfare support to the employee throughout the period of suspension. Keeping children safe in education states that you should try to manage and minimise the stress caused by the allegation, that we must not keep the employee, in, that we must keep the employee informed, explaining what the likely causes, courses of action will be. For example, if the LADO or the police come involved, become involved. This means that we need to appoint an appropriate person, named person or representative to do this. 
We also we must also encourage the employee to contact their trade union representative for support and guidance. That, as previous mentioned, we must provide the employee with access to counselling or other medical advice, such as through your EAP service or occupational health. Lastly, we must not prevent the employee from having social contact with work colleagues and friends. Unless, of course, there is evidence, this may prejudice the gathering of evidence. So how do we do all this? Well, the appointed support person is key here. I always advise that the nominated person calls the employee within the first few days of suspension to arrange and agree con a contact schedule with them. At each point of contact, the appointed person needs to be doing the following. They need to ask the employee how they are. They need to ask the employee if they are coping and do they need any support. They need to be reminding them of the EAP details and counselling services available to them. However, there may also be a need to consider whether occupational health referral is needed to be made or if they need to be signposting the individual to other external sources such as their GP or the Samaritans. They also need to be providing them with an update on the timeline of the investigation. They need to remember to listen to the employee and listen to their concerns and help where needed. Finally, they also need to agree the next date and time of contact. This level of support should be maintained throughout the period of suspension. You also need to consider what support you need to put into place for an employee returning to work after the period of suspension. Once a suspension has come to an end, then the employee should be returning to work immediately. It's important to remember that the employee may sometimes feel aggrieved about the suspension or worried about returning to work. Therefore, it is extremely important on the first day back to, uh, to arrange a return to work meeting. This will give you the opportunity to discuss and resolve any concerns they have. It may be advisable to also instruct occupational health at this stage to advise you on any reasonable adjustments needed to assist their return. Remember, open and continued communication will be, will be key. Regularly check in with the employee to ensure that, they, that their return to work is going well and to iron out any any concerns straight away. It's important to be proactive in providing support to ensure there is not no there is no absence relating to their return and to ensure there is no ongoing work related stress. If you do have concerns or if they do continue to display um, work related stress, then please remember to put in place a stress at work risk assessment to support them. Thank you for listening and please do get in touch if you need any further advice or support. Thank you.